Uh, at the end of the conference, um, in this innovative format, what are the main conclusions the participants have received regarding the future of freedom in Europe? Well, we have seen that the dream of Europe is not dead yet, but, but we might need a restart of that kind of dream. We need more communication, we need better communication, because times are changing. People are changing and communication is changing tremendously. And we cannot go on with the same style of politics that we have done in the past. We've seen with the Brexit that that doesn't work anymore. People are growing increasingly dissatisfied with the style of politics in Europe. And pol the politics have to react to that. And this means more communication, explaining better. At the same time, we need more education in Europe. And we need more integration in Europe at the end of the day. When we talk about the single market that has not been completed yet, when we talk about the rights and freedoms of the individuals, like free movement of people and capital, that has increasingly been put under question, especially in Western European countries, but also in Eastern European countries when we look at the migration crisis. So there is a whole bunch of problems that we have addressed, but there is also a whole bunch of solutions. That is more freedom, that means more individual responsibility in Europe, that means more freedom in trade, more freedom in entrepreneurship, more freedom in education, and especially more communication from politics towards the people. You have a vast experience uh, in the region and in Romania in particular. What is your personal take on the future of freedom in our country, in Romania? At the moment, um, we are in a bit of a conflicted situation, I would say. We have a generation that fought 1989-1990 very hard to gain freedom. We have a generation that work, worked very hard to be a member of the European Union. We have uh, generations that worked very hard to build up your country again after the devastation that Ceausescu and his henchmen left. But we have now a generation that partly, especially young people, take freedom for granted. We have an older generation that partly craves for more security rather than, than freedom. And in these times, I'm a bit worried sometimes about freedom. But the good thing is that, unlike in many other countries in Europe, liberal is a good word in, in, in Romania. Liberal is something that is good here, and that is something that, that lifts up my spirit a little bit. But there's so much to do in Romania to show people that freedom is not only worth fighting for, but it's a better solution for being more prosperous, for having a better life, for having a longer life, for being more happy. But that requires that especially the institutions, politics, but most of all the people change this country for a better. We cannot have it that you have one of the most corrupt health system in Europe that you have one of the most inefficient health systems in Europe. It cannot be that your uh, pension system is completely broke. It cannot be that you have such a high level of corruption when it comes to infrastructure. And it cannot be that you have so much interference in the judicial process by prosecutors of the NAR, for instance. Uh, to move a little closer to international politics, what do you think about uh, the transatlantic trade and investment uh, partnership? I think the TTIP would be a tremendous opportunity for America and Europe uh, together. Um, that means jobs on the one hand, growth of the GDP on the other hand. But more importantly, we would, we would create one single room for trade in Europe. That means if you would buy your iPhone in the future directly from the US, you would buy it cheaper. Because if you buy your iPhone in the US, it's approximately $100 cheaper than it would be in Europe. So it would be good for consumers. It would be tremendous for consumers to buy better, more and cheaper cars, better, more, cheaper computers, but also food that you cannot get here in Europe very easily. That all would be possible with TTIP. However, we have a very shrill discussion about that at the moment, meaning that the anti-globalization movement has very successfully, together with the European left, managed to capture the discussion about TTIP. Bringing it away from what good does it bring 
to a fear level that is nowhere near the truth. Let's take, for instance, the discussion on Germany, where we were talking about chicken that were bathed in chlorine and what would that make with, with your stomach and your health. Well, it turns out it would be the best solution because we would have not so many bacteria on the chicken. But it's not imposing rules from the US on Europe. TTIP is trying to find common rules for trade between the US and Europe for having more prosperous countries, more prosperous regions, and a more prosperous economic zone from San Francisco to Bucharest. On a final note, uh, what are the plans of the Friedrich Naumann's uh, Foundation for Freedom for near future in Romania? We have a lot of good things planned. Um, after our 25 years now in Romania that we just celebrated with a big gala with our old friends and partners, we will continue working with liberal political parties, liberal political youth organizations, but especially with our partners from the Institute for Liberal Studies on making Romania a more liberal place, but especially in explaining what liberalism is all about. Because sometimes why we need freedom needs a bit of a reminder. And last but not least, we have great new partners like Cardi or also the Romanian Football Association with whom we try to do good in the Romanian society. And there are so many interesting new, let's call it, startup NGOs in Romania that we would like to offer our support to, like, for instance, Initiative Romania, that are doing a tremendous job here with fantastic initiatives. But we are open for collaboration, for a more transparent, a more prosperous, more liberal Romania. Okay, thank you. <laughs>